before we get into it, I want to thank Jensen USA for supporting the channel. And if you use the affiliate links to pick up your own Nomad or anything else you need for yourself or your ride, it helps keep this thing going at no additional cost to you. All right, so today we are out here in a sweltering Pacific Northwest day on my all new, or on my new Santa Cruz Nomad. This is their 170 mixed wheel trophy truck of a bike. And I have just been having a riot on this thing. New for this year, it's yellow and has a Rock Shock Super Deluxe Ultimate on the back. So you get that adjustable hydraulic bottom out, which has been clutch as I step up what this bike can do. But this bike was all new last season. So you get pretty much the most up-to-date seat tube angles, head tube angles, all that stuff. And I'll go over that right now. I've been riding this thing in low. That means a 472 reach on a 63 and a half degree head tube. The front end is plenty tall with a 640 stack and a 77.6 degree seat tube makes for a pleasant climbing position. Finally, the 440 size specific rear center is balanced, all adding up to a manageable 1270 wheelbase on this size large. So that's what we're working with. Now let's get into the climb. I have already been able to ride some pretty tricky rock in Moab, some stuff up in Whistler and North Vancouver and Squamish. But this is actually my first ride on my usual text, test track. So we'll check it out on the switchbacks and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. Here we go. First switch back. Not much to worry about. And this one's the make or break. Um, yeah, pretty good. A little bit harder, but we'll do that one more time. See, take two. Pretty good. Well, yeah, it did it. Both tries, not much trouble. I do think I kind of expected a little bit more, but I don't know if that's really fair. I would say this is an A minus. It's easier than a lot of enduro bikes, but maybe not the easiest enduro bike on the switchbacks. So after some nice climbs and some wildly varied terrain, how's this thing ascend? Well, on switchbacks, as you just saw, it does pretty good. Maybe an A minus, but it's not the bike that's gonna be the overall issue if you're struggling. As far as traction, definitely an A, maybe even an A plus. This thing clawed at the rock in Moab, the wetness in Whistler, and wasn't spinning the wheel. I could stand up and just keep going. Lastly, efficiency. You know, that's gonna be a bit more body position and efficiency, and I'm gonna give it another, another A there because it's a bit more stretched out than some. You know, it's not that crazy upright where it just feels like you're not in the right position to breathe. But it also, I did not, I haven't used the lockout except for on a road just to feel it. And that's what I'm looking for. Like there's no unwanted movement from the suspension and it just keeps going. That's why I'd give it an A. Let's get into the fun stuff. I picked this bike up from Jensen USA back when they were having those crazy deals really excited because this is an exclusive build with full XT. It's also their higher end CC frame. Right now though, you can still get a full XT Nomad, at least last I checked. It is the C frame instead of the CC. You know, the rear shocks, not the super deluxe. 
coil ultimate like this guy and it but it actually does have probably a nicer fork than what this came with it's got the fox 38 performance elite so if you need need one or are looking check that out Get a bit overgrown. Turns out that moisture is good. Woo! Beautiful. All right. We'll see how this guy handles this. Partially how I handle it, but it's, yeah, just it's more maneuverable than some other bikes. And then, yeah, you release like that, you're good. Woo. All right, so how's this bad boy descend? Well, this guy descends like your best friend, it has got your back. It's gonna catch you in many a case. But it also, the mid-stroke support on this really allows you to push into corners, pop out of every little compression. And it keeps the bike very lively for how good the traction is. And, uh, you know, ugh not the easiest thing on a on a completely flat drop but with that hydraulic bottom out turned all the way up it feels just fine well my new nomad has already seen the dynamite roll I can't get this back home and not take it down the chief so here we go I'm glad I stomped in that rut at the bottom because I was not going to miss it. Here we go. Yeah. Woo. On jumps, it's nearly as nimble as the 5010 or even when searching. Obviously, the 5010 is lighter and definitely more nimble, but this is no dog. And while you do notice a little bit of that extra length compared to the evil insurgent, if you're gonna case something, or you need to give it a little extra um, it's happy to oblige. And then the steeps. Well, because that's what I do a lot of, that's the thing I really care about. And it is a bit slacker than the evil insurgent. And the brake definitely stay as active as that or that Rocky Mountain altitude. So, you know, you always have that control and you can shut it down basically anywhere, like right here. I'm not going to, because I'll then just fall down the hill. But if I wanted to, I could. And then just eating up the chunk, you know, I would probably give that, or I would definitely give that to the Rock Mountain Altitude. But again, it's no slouch and has enough end stroke support that you can really smash it in some rocks without it destroying your ankles. So who's this bike for? Well, this bike has free racer written all over it. It is so much more than just an enduro race bike. But under the right pilot, could be raced no problem. This bike is definitely for the person who wants that ultra capable enduro rig, but maybe likes to get off the ground a little bit more than some and isn't afraid to take on a, a new feature here or there. 
It's also going to go back to more bikes if you ride a lot of steep, or if you're a little bit short, shorter, these mixed wheel options are just better for your body position. And slow and, and controlled. I think that's why we're seeing so much movement this direction. Final thoughts. Playfulness is definitely an overused word. And I'm not gonna say this thing's more playful. I am gonna say though, if you want something that likes to get off the ground, hop around the trail, but when you get into something super steep, the brakes stay totally active, this is it. Also frame storage. This bike delivers on everything I was looking for. It's a mullet that rides built like a mullet. It's playful to a point. It has traction to a point. It's maybe not as playful as the Evil Insurgent or as much traction as the Rocky Mountain Altitude, but it's not far off on either account. So I've been stoked and I am going to continue to ride this thing and hopefully step up to some new features soon. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think. If you've ridden this bike or the other bikes I've tried out, how do you think they compare? Check out Jensen USA. If you need anything for yourself or your ride. And I'm not sure if it still works, but definitely try the code NAR20 to get that extra 20% off select goods. Goodbye. Ah.